A friend of mine found this Mead telescope at a yard sale. It was essentially a pile of loose parts. And you know, they only paid $10 for it. It's a little bit dirty, it's a little bit beat up, it's uh, missing a few items. But we're gonna try to see if we can make it as good as new. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this may be the deal of the century. So let's take a look at what we have. We have these three wooden legs. Uh, they have these metal straps on them that come together. We have a viewfinder, a six by 30, uh, that looks to be in pretty good shape. The crosshairs are broken. So we're gonna have to go ahead and, I'll try to put some new wires through there if that's possible. There's a uh, moon filter. There's a nice uh, diagonal that it came with. Now here's a neat accessory pack. It comes with a 18 millimeter eyepiece, a uh, five millimeter. It's really stuck in there. I have to work on getting that out. And a tele-negative. This is uh, this is a Barlow, so it's 2x Barlow. Uh, it has a equatorial head, pretty nice one. It has the place where you can put in a polar scope. If you had one, we might end up getting one for uh, my friends. And uh, it's got the flexible adjustment on this axis. This one has a fixed adjustment. I'm not used to seeing that. I'm used to seeing these flexible ones. But most importantly, we have the telescope. It's a Mead Model 320. It has a focal length of 900 millimeters. It's a 80 millimeter in diameter. Uh, this is pretty nice. Uh, my understanding is that it has some really nice glass in those lenses. So I'll do some research and find out the real deal. Uh, so what's wrong with this? What needs to be fixed? Well, as you can see, the axle on the rack and pinion is bent. That needs to be straightened out. Uh, the lenses are dusty, so I'll have to clean those. Again, I need to fix the wire crosshairs on there. That's broken. There is, there's no accessory tray between the legs. The original was a circle. I'm gonna make a little bit better than that. I'm gonna I'm gonna build a circle. I'm gonna put holes in it for eyepieces, and I'm gonna make sure it has little channels so that these go in pretty snug to keep the legs all at 120 degrees. So that should be pretty straightforward. We'll 3D print that, and then the equatorial head just needs a little bit cleaning up. Otherwise, it looks pretty nice. So let's get started. So I assembled the telescope and I took it outside to get a baseline for what I can expect. Uh, I haven't fixed anything, I haven't cleaned anything, the front lenses are still covered in dust, and there's not even a viewfinder on this. I pointed it at the moon and I got the sharpest image of the moon I've ever gotten with a refractor style telescope. There was no blue fringe, there was no chromatic aberration at all. And if you've ever used a refractor telescope, you know what an achievement that is. I'm starting to suspect that the glass they used in the lenses is uh, very advanced. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on that, but I can tell you this, I'm very excited and looking forward to seeing how well this performs once it's all cleaned up and everything is fixed. All right, so here is the equatorial head for the Mead 320 telescope. If the first thing that comes to mind is, oh no, this is a hobby killer, I want you to know that I used to think that too, but that's not the case anymore, thanks to YouTube. Um, I also, uh, I, I put together a quick video, I'll put a link to it in the bottom, that basically takes you step by step how to set these up to make it super easy. And I also explained that video, uh, one of the uh, really super helpful reasons for using an equatorial head. But anyways, let's jump back to this. So this is an equatorial head, it's very similar to the one that I restored previously in a video. This one has some pretty nice features to it. Let's just start moving around it. Uh, it has the leg here, the north leg, that's pretty nice. It has these adjustment screws. Uh, they're covered in grease and dust. We'll go ahead and clean those up. This 
is uh, it's it's made to hold a polar scope that goes in here and looks out the front end. Uh, there's supposed to be a big cap here to keep the dust and you know elements out, but it's not there. So I'll probably have to I'll probably have to make one. I might I'll end up probably 3D printing one there. It has this uh, this worn out green felt right here to hold the telescope. Uh, I have some brown felt that I'll be putting there. Uh, it doesn't have to be green. It's not the 1970s. This whatever I find will work just just well. By the way, I have the weight removed. And the weight is just fine. The shaft, it's not rusted at all. This actually is in really good shape. So I'm going to let that be. Uh, one of the things I do need to point out on this are the slow motion flex cables. This has a nice one right here on the right ascension axis. Of course, the way this is set up, I can turn this forever and it will spin forever. And it's just going to go around and around and around. The declination axis, this guy right here, it has this, it has an actual a metal axis. I don't like that because that's pretty much a perfect recipe for uh, a, a bent part. If this hits something, it's going to bend. You're going to end up with a bent shaft. So I'm going to probably try to find a used uh, slow motion flex cable to put on there. And one thing to keep in mind is that these attachment points for the slow motion cables right here, and there's one over here as well, uh, they come in generally two different diameters. There's a six millimeter and an eight millimeter. And when you look online, uh, it seems like 99% of, of all the available slow motion cables and, and accessories are for the six millimeter diameter shaft. So this is eight millimeter. So I'm probably gonna have to dig deep and find someone that's gonna be able to sell me a used one at a reasonable price. Uh, I'll put that one here. And that does bring up a good point. So the right ascension axis, I can turn this, you know, till the cows come home and this is going to spin around and around and around. That is not the case on the declination axis. This one only moves a little bit. You can see it here. This is a stop and this basically can, I can turn this until this hits here, turn it the other way until it hits here. That's all the movement I get. The good news is that if you're going to use your viewfinder and you get everything lined up, you're going to probably not need to adjust this very much at all. Uh, this is the one, of course, this flexible knob here on the right ascension. This is the one that is going to basically help you chase your target through the sky. So this one will be a fine tune maybe once, and then um, and then you probably won't need to touch this one again. One last thing here. Uh, these are held on with these Allen heads. You need an Allen, Allen wrench, and I really don't like that, but I think these are 4 millimeter threads. I'll have to check. I'm going to get some knurled screws for a quick uh, disconnect on these. But, you know, other than that, we're going to give it a good cleaning and make it look good as new. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the equatorial head. It's all cleaned up and, and uh, degreased and ready to go, but it is missing a uh, part. 
And that is the cap that goes on the Polish scope hole here. It's supposed to have a soft rubber plastic cap that goes in there. And I think we're gonna to have to 3D print one. So first thing we need to do is measure, measure the inside of this hole. And it's about a little less than 42 millimeters. So let's go ahead, we'll whip something up, uh, maybe see if something already exists, and we will go ahead and 3D print this. Before I reinvent the wheel, I'm going to go to Thingiverse.com and do a search on Polar Scope Cap and see if somebody else has already created this and uploaded it. Let's scroll down and see what we have. And this looks like it might work. Uh, this Polar Scope Cap is made by the Valerian Warrior 1982. They were nice enough to upload the file. Let's go ahead and download it. And once we have that file, let's uh, minimize this. And we're going to be opening up our 3D parts uh, slicer. While this is loading, I wanted to tell you a quick story. I recently bought a Creality 3D printer. It's a, it's a CR10 Smart on super duper sale. And I found that it was taking two to three times longer than my old clunky FlashForge Finder 3D printer. And so I discussed this with a friend of mine, uh, Chris. He's the proprietor of builderofstuff.com. I'll put a link to that down in the description. And he, as it turns out, had the same printer and he created a custom profile and he sent that to me and it actually cut the print times in by like 75%. I was totally blown away. So uh, please, if you have a CR10, um, and you need his expertise, feel free to contact Chris at builderofstuff.com. All right, so we've already imported the STL file, and unfortunately, it's a little too small. So I'm going to have to scale it up by about 64%, uh, and we'll go ahead and do that. And okay, so it's looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and push the slice button over here, and it's going to go through the process, and it's going to generate the file. And it says that it's going to take about an hour and six minutes to print. Uh, okay, that, that's fair. All right, I'll push the. Let's take a look at what we got here. It's doing a print preview, and we're going to save to disk. And we'll just uh, make sure it's going to the thumb drive that we've got. And we'll change the name a little bit. We'll call it Polar Scope Cap. We save and it saves the file. All right, and uh, now we're going to eject the thumb drive and we will go ahead and put the memory card into the 3D printer. So here's the 3D printed piece. Let's go ahead and stand this up. This is supposed to go in here. It's a little bit loose, but that's okay. We have some self-adhesive felt. Uh, it's just the right width. I think I got this from uh, Home Depot, I think. And uh, let's see if we can put it in here. That's a perfect fit, actually. It's, it's, it's actually snug. It's really snug. This is going to do a great job of keeping the dust out. It does have a tightening screw. We can use that if we want, but this is pretty snug enough that we don't need to do that. All right, so that part's done. The polar scope area is all fixed and sealed from dust. What's left are these, these cables, what we, what we use to control the right ascension axis. So we turn this, you can see it turns there. Um, this is held on with Allen screws. Now, ideally what I would like to do is get one of these flexible shafts and put it on here where we have the rigid shaft. I'm gonna unscrew this. Unfortunately, you see this hole, this again, I, I mentioned this earlier, this is eight millimeter and you just can't find these anymore. You can't find them new. Maybe you can find them used uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a used one to put on here. So for now, we're going to stick with what we have. But I am going to get rid of these annoying Allen head screws. I'm going to put some more uh, thumb-friendly screws on here. I did happen to find uh, a plastic screw 
this one right here and this could this happens to fit uh, I believe it's an M5 thread but my worry is that eventually this would actually snap off and then that would be a really bad problem so I wanted to stick with metal and I went to my local Ace Hardware and if you can believe it the local Ace Hardware had these metric thumb screws this was awesome what a great find these were if you can believe it almost three dollars a piece but they were worth it uh, they had it locally and i was able to pick them up right away so i'll go ahead and thread these in partially and i'll put this one on the right ascension axis all right let's turn it make sure it goes around without hitting anything Let's do the same thing with the declination axis. Remove that screw. I'll put the new thumb screw in, the new $3 thumb screw. There you go. All right, that swings without hitting anything. For now, we have a really good working equatorial head. It's sealed from the dust. We have this, uh, these working axis controls, and they have these really nice, convenient thumb screws. So I'd say the equatorial head is done, and now we can work on the telescope. Up next is part two. Be sure to like and subscribe.